We know that the DC Extended Universe has big plans for Black Adam. They are not going to use him in one film and be done. One indicator of this is that they cast Dwayne The Rock Johnson in the role. He is the biggest action star in the world right now, and the most expensive, so I imagine they want to maximize their return on investment. Additionally, Black Adam is a character who is interesting enough to be the center of a story all on his own, independent of Shazam. That is, he is not reliant on being the arch nemesis of Shazam. Many stories in the comics feature him without Shazam being involved. Also, he could fall into the category of an anti-hero, as he has a propensity for good and evil, which could make for some interesting storytelling on film if they explore that internal conflict. It looks like they are leaning towards a solo movie, as well as making him the villain in the sequel to Shazam. So, in addition to all the things they can do with Black Adam on his own, this can be the DCEU's chance to really make the Shazam franchise interesting after the forgettable first movie. Stay tuned as I break down the top 10 comics to invest in ahead of Black Adam's debut in the DCEU. Hi everyone, Matthew here. Welcome to my channel, Heroic Press, dedicated to bringing you the latest in superhero movie news and comic book investment tips. If you're new, please hit the notification bell so you can stay up to date when new videos come out. Let's get into this top 10 video. Coming in at number 10, Power of Shazam number 10, featuring a great cover by Jerry Ordway with Black Adam. In fact, all 47 issues in this series feature Jerry Ordway covers, which are all really fantastic. This book features the origin of the original Shazam, the wizard. The wizard travels from Canaan to Egypt, seeking a worthy successor to bestow the powers of Shazam upon. He settles on Teth Adam, a son of Ramses II, after observing a good amount of fairness and decency in how he conducted himself as a prince in Egypt. This is ancient Black Adam, but he is called Mighty Adam when he first gets his powers. Long story short, Mighty Adam is corrupted by his power and the wizard ends up going back on his decision and takes away the powers of Shazam from Tethadam. The powers protected him from natural aging, so when they were taken away, his body instantly aged and he died. As a corpse, he was entombed in Ramses II's temple, and his name was changed from Tethadam, Teth meaning good, to Kem Adam, Kem meaning blackness, as in the blackness of the soil of the Nile. The Egyptians called their own land Kem. Hence the name Black Adam. So the value in this book is the cool cover and that it's the origin of the Shazam wizard as well as Black Adam, although it is a slight tweaking to the original origin. Power of Shazam 10. You can pick this book up in high grade for less than $10. Coming in at number 9 is JSA number 16. Black Adam joins the Injustice Society, led by Johnny Sorrow. There is speculation that the Justice Society of America will be coming to the big screen, and that Black Adam may be the door to introduce them. Johnny Sorrow is one of the more interesting villains of the JSA, and his Injustice Society could be the perfect enemies of the JSA. Black Adam eventually ends up betraying the Injustice Society, allowing the JSA to defeat them. If they adapt this in a JSA movie, it would be great source material to explore Black Adam's inner conflict with good and evil that I mentioned in the intro to this video. I think this would be very effective in engaging audiences, as they would feel emotional extremes toward the character. Here is this guy who is so powerful and so evil that you absolutely hate him, but as you see cracks of good, you root for him to turn good because you want him on the hero's side. JSA number 16, you can pick this book up in high grade for less than $10. At the number 8 spot, 52, week number 23, features the first appearance of the Black Marvel family. We got to see the Marvel family on film in the Shazam movie in the final battle when they were fighting the seven deadly enemies of man. This is Black Adam's version of the Marvel family. I have a lot to say about this, but I will save it for another video for the sake of time. 52, week number 23, you can also pick this book up in high grade for less than $10. At the number 7 spot, Black Adam number 1, the 1 in 10 variant cover. This is the first issue in his solo series and has one of the best Alex Ross painted covers of all time. Alex Ross is a master at capturing light realistically and depicting characters in powerful poses. Here the blacks are rich and the yellows and whites are luminous and you can feel the electricity and explosive power of Black Adam from this cover. 
Black Adam number one, the Alex Ross variant. This book is expensive, but you can get a nice raw copy for a little less than $100. Anything in CGC 9.2 and above is going to be over $100. Being that this is very collectible already, you can be reasonably sure you will not lose money on this, but as interest for this character grows, you may see this book go up more. I am going to lump three comics in together for the number six spot, because of these three, I can't guess which would be the single most desirable to have by itself. The main attraction of these is that they are among the earliest appearances of Black Adam, and having that status, none of them are being pursued by collectors up to this point, meaning they are cheap and historically significant for a character with such breakout potential. The first of these, World's Finest number 257, in a single panel, he only appears as Tethadam in prison, but the name Black Adam is mentioned. If you want to be technical, this would be the third appearance at DC. The second issue is World's Finest number 264, which has a 10-page Shazam slash Captain Marvel story called The Monster Society Strikes Back. The Monster Society of Evil is led by Mr. Mind and includes Dr. Savannah, Ibak, King Cole, Mr. Adam, Ogre, and Black Adam. This would be his fourth appearance and he is featured much more prominently in this issue as well as in the third comic that's taking up the number six on this list, World's Finest number 267, which has a 10-page Shazam slash Captain Marvel story called Assault on the Rock of Eternity. World's Finest 257, 264, and 267. Each of these books can be picked up in high grade for around $10. In the number 5 spot, Alter Ego number 7 from 1964. Alter Ego was the self-proclaimed world's first comic book fanzine, a magazine dedicated to comic fans. The cover by Bill Joe White features Black Adam throwing a stone at the Marvel family. This is not an official comic book appearance, but it is the only time Black Adam shows up in the Silver Age. I do not know if there is interior art that shows Black Adam, but it does contain an article called One Man's Family, The Saga of the Mighty Marvels by Roy Thomas with accompanying art by Bill Joe White. This is a hard book to find and it is going to run you several hundred dollars in mid-grade. There is a slight possibility you may get lucky and find it included in a fan magazine lot on eBay or elsewhere. Sometimes people who collect magazines are not necessarily aware of what they have and will often lump a bunch of them together to clear out space and make some fast money. But their magazines also tend to be well read at the same time so finding it in high grade will be a hunt. Alter Ego number 7. This will cost anywhere from a few hundred to over a thousand dollars depending on the grade. At the number 4 spot, all new collector's edition Superman vs Shazam DC Treasury Edition number C58. That's a mouthful. This is from 1978. This features the second appearance of Black Adam in an original story at DC. This is not a small cameo appearance. Black Adam plays a significant role in the storyline. Being a Treasury Edition with the oversized cheaply made paper stock cover, these are abundant in low grade and mid grade, but difficult to find in high grade, even more more so since CGC does not slab treasury sized books. Treasuries are a bit of an outsider in comic collecting and don't tend to command the prices of regular comic book keys. But if Black Adam takes off, this is his second appearance. And if you have a high grade copy now, you can be in a good position when demand for this book goes up. In fact, I think there is an argument to be made that a niche demand for treasuries in general has some real potential to grow over the long run, but that will be for another video. The good news is that you have a very fair chance of getting a high grade copy of all new Collector's Treasury Edition number C58 for around $100. Number 3 on the list, DC Comics Presents number 49. Many people confuse this with the second appearance of Black Adam, but if you count the Treasury Edition and the World's Finest issues, it's actually the sixth appearance. However, it is the second time where he gets a cover appearance and is featured as the dominant villain. The whole issue is about Superman and Shazam taking on Black Adam. Covers go a long way in the level of demand for comic book issues, and in my opinion this one is undervalued. DC Comics Presents number 49. You can get a CGC 9.8 for just under $200, and a 9.6 for about $100. I think this book has room to grow in price and this would be an ideal time to get it. At the number 2 spot, Shazam number 28. This is the big one that everyone is after, the first appearance of Black Adam in an original story at DC. 
Black Adam only appeared once in the Golden Age, and there was nothing for decades until the Bronze Age. Like DC Comics Presents 49, here the entire story revolves around Black Adam, focusing on his return, picking right up where he left off in Marvel Family No. 1 from 1945. The artwork for the first dozen or so issues of the Shazam title at DC was done by the original Golden Age artist and Captain Marvel co-creator, C.C. Beck. As the series went on, they tried to maintain the similar art style, though it was no longer C.C. Beck drawing. So we have in this issue the second and final time Black Adam is drawn in this cool Golden Age simple cartoon style form before DC started having Captain Marvel and associated characters drawn in a more realistic fashion. Shazam 28 is the real starting point for canonized Black Adam at DC. It's the first time they used the character in a new story since purchasing Fawcett. Shazam 28 in 9.8 will run you close to $2,000. The 9.6 is approaching 600. Even the 4.5 has a fair market value of over $100. This is an expensive book in all grades already, but it is the one collectors are going to go for first, and one that will continue to grow in value over time if Black Adam takes off. Before we get into the number one spot, if you enjoy this video so far, please do me a favor, hit the like button, and share it with others. I appreciate your support. What could possibly be better than Shazam 28, effectively the first appearance of Black Adam? In my humble opinion, that would be Shazam number 8. I chose this book because I believe it is very undervalued for what it is. You'll notice I did not include the first true appearance of Black Adam, Marvel Family number 1, anywhere on this list, and the reason for that is because it is so expensive already. Few people have or are willing to part with the $2,000 it would take to even obtain a CGC 1.5 copy. A 7.0 is around 10 grand. Not that this is not a good investment, but that is a lot of money to be out while betting on a worthwhile return. Shazam 8 is a great, affordable alternative because it reprints for the first time the Black Adam story The Mighty Marvels Join Forces from Marvel Family No. 1. There are 28 years difference between the Golden Age Marvel Family No. 1 and the Bronze Age Shazam No. 8, with no Black Adam at all in between except an unofficial appearance on the cover of a fanzine, Alter Ego 7. As an added bonus, this book also reprints Captain Marvel Adventures No. 18, which is the first appearance of Mary Marvel. Another thing to note, this is a DC 100 page super spectacular. These formats are difficult to find in high grade. Because of the thickness of the book and the glued on cover, they are susceptible to spine problems and not easily remedied through conservation methods. You will often see parts of the spine bulging out on the side when looking at the cover head on, or parts of the spine will be crushed or twisted in some bizarre way. This could happen from the manufacturing process or how they were handled and stored over the years. Also, there are only 172 copies graded by CGC, as opposed to Shazam 28 which has 675. GoCollect reports 9.8s to have a fair market value of only $425, with the last sale being in October 2016. This would indicate many people are wisely holding their 9.8s for the right moment. The runner-up, 9.6, is listed at $230, but the most recent one of those sold over a year ago. The 9.4 is at an average of $170 with recent sales data, a fair price, but it is creeping up. The 9.2 is only $100, and I would say if you find a 9.2 at that price, get it quickly. Alternatively, you can try to pick up high-grade copies on eBay for below $100. This still may be a good time to chance an auction for a nice-looking copy to have graded yourself. So just to recap, Shazam number 8 lets you get the first and only Golden Age appearance of Black Adam reprinted for the first time at DC since it was purchased from Fawcett years earlier. It predates the DC canonized reintroduction of Black Adam in Shazam number 28 by more than three years. It comes in a square bound 100 page format which is hard to find in high grade. I am recommending Shazam 8 because you can get in for cheaper than Shazam 28 and I believe it has a much higher ceiling than its current sale prices indicate. So that's the top 10, but I have a bonus. 
Adventure Comics 497 from 1983. This book also reprints the Marvel Family 1 Black Adam story, but this came out 10 years after Shazam 8. However, it does fall in the range of years where Marvel and DC made Canadian price variant newsstand editions, which were about 10% of the total print run. 10% of the total print run with newsstand conditions adds up to rarity of nice copies. So if you are into this kind of niche, there is a Canadian price variant edition of Adventure Comics 497. I will put timestamps on each of the rankings in this list if you want to go back and reference any of them. I will also put links to my comic shop in the description for each of these books if you want to pick them up from there. If you have a chance, head over to the GoCollect blog and check out articles by myself and other contributing writers where we discuss all things related to comic book investing. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.